Hello there, welcome to another video on a solid foundation. In our last video, we looked at uh, the significance of Lafayette Square and the image of the beast, the merging of church and state, and so today I will like to address the elephant in the room, and that is, how can everyone, everyone unite? You know, how will that even be possible? So remember, before I go further, leave me a comment, share, like this video if you have any, you find it interesting or find it of an inspiration to you. So, before I share my view on that and what will happen once the image is set up, here is a cold hard fact. We have Joshua Abraham Norton, or as he preferred to be called, His Imperial Majesty Norton IV. He proclaimed himself Emperor of the United States and Protector of Mexico in 1859. Now, although this man was a pauper, he was fed in San Francisco's best restaurants for free. Although you can see he was a madman, he had all his state's proclamation published in San Francisco's newspaper. And though he was generally considered insane or at least highly eccentric, the citizens of San Francisco and many parts of the world in the mid to late 19th century celebrated his presence. They enjoyed him, his humor and his deeds. Among, you know, as, as we talk about deeds, among the most notorious, he had an order that the U.S. Congress be dissolved by force and his decree calling for a bridge to be built across the great San Francisco Bay. Now, here's a little back, back story. Norton was born in England and he spent most of his uh, early life in South Africa. He came to San Francisco in 1849 and after receiving $40,000 from his father's estate. He initially worked as a businessman, but he lost all of his money invested in Peruvian rice. So he left San Francisco, but later returned. And that's when he returned, he became apparently mentally disturbed. Now, that's when he started to make his proclamation, proclaiming himself as Emperor of the United States. And many people, you know, they at first they thought he was humorous. They love his statements, you know. But interestingly, after he died, a bridge was built across San Francisco Bay. We know the iconic Golden Gate Bridge and so on, all right? Now, on January 21st, 1867, an overzealous police officer arrested His Majesty Norton I for mental disorder and thereby created a major civil uproar. You wouldn't believe it. The police chief apologized to Norton and ordered him release. Several newspapers, they wrote some scathing editorial following this arrest. All police officers began to salute Norton when he passed them on the street. You wouldn't believe that. And in 1880 at his funeral, you had 30,000 people turn out for his funeral. My friend, the image of the beast and the mark of the beast works the same way. Everyone knew to themselves, they knew to their mind that Mr. Norton was no emperor, but they still love him, they still supported him, they still even defended him. And that is why the image that will be set up to pay homage to the first beast, many people who you know today will go along with it even though they know it's wrong. They will aggressively rise up to support it and defend it the same way we see that. So let me elaborate. The basic categories of religion, religious branches in the world, you have like polytheism, believing in many gods. You have monotheism, believing in only one god. And then you have people who consider themselves atheists. They do not believe in any god. But however, there is deism, right, which is uh, reflects that nature and scientific principles are an incarnation of God and then you have the agnosticism they denotes this position that people who are looking for answers but they are you know they're unable to deduce whether God exists or not all these people will unite into two camps you either those who obey God or those who are gonna obey the dragon or the devil so let's look closer at religions Let's, let's take a closer look. We have Christianity. Christianity is a broad group. You have people consider themselves non-denominational, charismatic, Baptist, Presbyterian, and the works, all right? Uh, all of them worship on Sunday, except for like uh, Sabbath keepers. You have like some uh, Seventh-day Baptists, Seventh-day Adventists, etc. Then you have Islam. Islam is mainly Friday's the prayer time, right? Islam is the second largest religion in the world. 
And by the way, the word Islam means submission to the will of God. It's very important. They, they're more monotheistic. They believe in, in one God, Allah, which is the Arabic word, right? You find these people a lot in like Saudi Arabia, Pakistan, uh, Morocco, Turkey, etc. You have Buddhists or Buddhism. They, they, there's no special day for them. They believe in meditation a lot, right? So the belief in this state of Nirvana, which they can achieve through good acts in the world. They believe that they can be reincarnated even up to seven times. So Thailand, Burma, Cambodia is where you find a lot of these people. Then we have Judaism, the Jews. Most people know this, you know, Saturday, located in Israel. I don't think I need to go into much detail with that one. But then you have Hinduism. Every day, they worship them every day, but mainly Monday, Friday, and Saturday, they find time. Hindus, they do not have a single founder or a scripture or a set of agreed teachings, but it's based on a poly polytheistic belief. And we have about one billion people who call themselves Hindus. We have Taoism, which is Saturday. Taoism, they believe in and living in harmony with Tao, who is considered to be the force behind everything in, in existence. You find this in Taiwan and Chinese and the yin and yang. So to those of you who are Star Wars followers, may the force be with you. You're basically following that belief system. We have atheism. This is the set of principle. They believe in cold hard facts and logic. You know, they people will strive for answers to the universe without the intervention of any uh, metaphysical being. And so in other words, they do not believe in any God. And we have over 1.2 billion people who consider themselves atheists today. So Denmark, China, Sweden, even the right here in America. We have Sikhs or Sikhism. They don't have any special day. They follow the teachings of 10 main gurus of their religion. And they believe that they are the disciples of God himself. All right, you find them a lot in India and different parts. Um, we have Mormonism, not very popular, but they still worship on uh, Sunday. And Mormonism is somewhat less recognized as a religion. You find mainly in places like Jamaica and Cuba. Now. You have all the major religions in the world um, that exist. Uh, some people consider themselves spiritual, spiritualists, uh, spiritism. You have over like 15 million of these people. Baha'i, um, probably like 4.2 around there. You have Shinto, um, and, and, and the list goes on. You have many other little uh, religions uh, exist. So I'm sharing that with you to show the whole gamut of people who either believe or don't believe. All these religions, however, all these people were either once persecuted by the first beast, they ran away the way uh, the, the pioneers came to the new world, and some who decided to stay, decided to give up on the idea of God altogether. So here's something. In Daniel 7.25, here's what it says. Let me take you back to that scripture. It says, and he shall speak great words against the Most High, talking about this beast, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High, the believers, and think to change times and laws, very key, and they shall be given into his hands, the saints, until time and times and the dividing of times. Now, in Bible, times is a year, 360 days, not 365, what we have now. Times, plural, means twice that, so that'd be 720 days, and divide the time, be half that, 180. Altogether, we're talking about 1,060 days or 1,060 years. Remember in my previous video, I said there's a day per year principle. Now, this same beast mentioned in Daniel 7.25 is mentioned again in Revelation 13, verses 4 and 6. So here it says, And they worship the dragon which gave the power unto the beast, and they worship the beast, saying, who is like unto the beast? The same way they love Mr. Norton, right? Who is able to stand or make war with him? And there was given unto him mouth to speak great things of blasphemies, and power was given to him to continue for 40 and 2 months. I already told you 40 and 2 months is the same as 1,260 days or years because there's 30 days in a month, and 30 by 42 gives you that number. And it says that he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name, and his tabernacle, and them that dwell in heaven. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints, again the believers, to overcome them. And power was given him over all kingdoms and towns and nations, everybody. There's no, you call yourself an atheist or whatever? No, power over everyone. So here's my point. Here's my point. 
which woman who was significantly abused by her spouse for years, mentally, physically, if when she gets that restraining order or she's delivered from her abuser, would keep his picture or would keep her his perfume or anything of that monster, not a single woman would do that. Yet all these religions did exactly that. And that is why in the last days, the image of the beast is a reality. So let me share with you this fact from the Catholic records, from the book called The Fate of Millions. It says, But since Saturday, not Sunday, is specified in Bible, isn't it curious that non-Catholics who profess to take their religion directly from the Word of God and not from the church observe Sunday instead of Saturday? Yes, of course, it is inconsistent that this change was made centuries before Protestantism was born. They have continued the custom even though it rests upon the authority of the Catholic Church and not upon any explicit texts in the Bible. That observance remained as a reminder of the mother church from which non-Catholic sects broke away and we find this in page 400 to page 401 of that book. Here's what Archbishops of Rigo, here's what uh, he mentioned and he at that time of the Council of Trent said, it's the, in, in the written word explicitly enjoins the observance of the seventh day as the Sabbath. They do not observe the seventh day but reject it. If they do truly hold the scriptures alone as their standard they would be observing the seventh day as is enjoined in the scripture throughout. Yet they not only reject the observance of the Sabbath enjoined in the written word, my friends, and but they have adopted and do practice the observance of Sunday for which they have only the tradition of the Catholic Church. And you find that's quoted from the book, uh, Rome's Challenge, Why Do Protestants Keep Sunday? page 23 published in 1995. Now in the end there'll be no atheist, there'll be no Buddhist, there'll be no Shinto, Muslim or Presbyterian or a non-denational person. You know you are either going to be willing to pay homage to the beast because you think it is right or like the folks in San Francisco who even though they know Mr. Norton was that they came to his rescue in that you know it is wrong but you still carry it out anyway. So you either love the beast or not. Some people say, you know what, I got to eat, I have to live. Many will think that it doesn't make sense, but they'll still go along with it. So just like how they waited until the end and the bridge was built, I don't want you to take that risk right now to wait until the end to see if I'm right or if I'm wrong. My friends, many people did not uh, uh, come out and say, Mr. Norton is a crazy guy. They fell in love with him, they saluted him, they came to his rescue, they came to his funeral, and in the same way, in the end, whether you consider yourself a Catholic, uh, whether you consider yourself a non-denominational, an atheist, an agnostic, or uh, you believe in deism, in the end, because many people even though they claim they broke away from the first beast, when that image is set up, paying homage, will go back home. Will go back home to support. Either because of fear, either because of the pressure, either because they know it is wrong, but just want to go along with it for safety, they will make their decisions. The question is, what will we do for ourselves today. That's where I will stop for now. If you like what you hear again, don't forget, leave me a comment, like, subscribe, share this video. Until next time, remember a solid foundation is what you need if you are looking, my friends, to avoid the mark of the beast when the image is set up.